be the case. be the case.
All right. Hello, hello. Welcome to the Quantum League Championship 2v2 event. I'm going to take a look at the bracket here. So for this tournament, we've got a couple of new faces. Um, the first match we're going to start out with is going to be Soko versus TBS. Uh, these four players are new to the tournament. Uh, we have not seen them before, so that'll be an interesting game to watch. And then after that, we're going to jump over to um, Jay and Dart versus Safrat. And that's going to look like it's going to be a close matchup. Um, following that, we will be switching across the brackets to the semifinals of whoever makes it out of these three matchups. And then we will be jumping to the finals. So we're just getting our lobbies set up. Um, for this first matchup, we have the players. On Team Soko is Saxy and Tenderizer. And on Team TBS, or Totally Bronze Strats, are Forgiven and Lux. Yep, we're just getting that match set up right now. Everyone's getting invited and ready to go, and we'll get the first game of this tournament started in just a second. I'm excited. So, last 2v2 tournament, we saw JP and Darth win it all, right? I believe they were the championships, championship winners. Um, that was just for glory. This one does have a, a prize pool attached to it, so um, I'm curious to see how... Um, they go up against our top seed here, which is Stay Lucky. Stay Lucky is team, or team Stay Lucky is So Lucky and Stafe. Um, JP and Darth are coming up here at second seed. So they are on opposite sides of the bracket. And just going off of seeds, those two are the most likely to be seen in the finals. But um, upsets can certainly happen, especially in 2v2s. It's much less uh, easy to predict those. Yeah, it definitely changes the dynamic a lot. Uh, you can tell how individual players are going to be going, but then when it comes into them pairing up and then going against each other, it definitely changes the predictions. And for our first matchup, we have Soko and Tolly Brown Strats. They are seed 9 and 8. Um, and let's put Soko on blue and TBS on red. I have to make sure that overlay is ready to go. Uh, and then are you, let me invite you. And then I think we'll have everyone in. Um, I did not get an invite yet. Get one now. Let me just make sure it's got to set it to, I believe, 18 seconds is the loop length for a 2v2. Yes, 18 seconds, change, uh, Quantum Stadium. Change the arena as well. Let me, let me let them know to make those changes, and then we should be ready to start. Cool, looks like they did it. All right, is everything set up? We're looking good. Uh, you have to, well, hold on, no, there we go. <laughs> Not quite unless yeah, you're playing. I like to stay in the uh, team spot just in case someone accidentally hits start. I stay there just so they know not to get it going before we have everything set up. That way we don't have any false starts. That is a good way to do that. So just to go over again, uh, Team Soko is going to be Saxy and Tenderizer, and then um, team TBS or Totally Bronze Strats is Forgiven versus Lux. All new players, so really hard to say how this will go, but it'll hopefully be an interesting match. Close one as well. All right. Uh, are we ready to get started? I'm ready. Are they ready? Yeah, they're telling me they're ready. They're just waiting on us. I'll give them the go ahead. All right. <clears throat> All right.
here we go into the first round of this 2v2 tournament. So it's like we have two silver medals here, a bronze and another silver. So they seem to be pretty uh, close in skill level. Let's have a good It's going to be easy game. to keep track of the teams. Each team has the same uh, player model. Oh, perfect. All right, we got Tenderizer pushing right side here, taking out the SMG. I'm not hearing any grenade launchers going off, so this will be interesting. Last 2v2, we saw a lot of explosions. Four seconds here. Looks like Team Soko is not pushing point. They got both kills, though, so they denied the first loop getting any points, or at least putting pressure on the um, point capture. But neither of them made it to the point themselves, even though they were able to clear the other side. Yes. So their first clones are not going to be super useful when it comes to, to uh, point control. And we see TBS take one of these health packs there. One, two is on point. We have the second two pushing. Tinder guys, it's taken out. And TBS has point control. There's some very interesting movements from Soko team. They're holding back, trying to do a last second push, but they're just not timing it right, either getting to the point or getting kills. And it's kind of uh, their strategy of holding back isn't really helping them out there. They just need a little bit better time management, getting on point in the last second push just a slight bit earlier. And they will be on point for the contest, but it looks like TBS is going to wipe them out. They have at least three or four clones on point there to get this round. Yeah, taking a look at these three uh, these three loops to give uh, TBS their first win. Soko was not doing enough damage on any of the clones. So when it came down to the final battle at the middle, they pretty much had every player alive and Soko had to take them all out one by one. And it's, it puts them at a disadvantage. You get to take out that many enemy players. Yes, they're just getting pressured a little bit by TBS. So they didn't have enough uh, time to frag all of those bodies. It looks like we have Saxy took out the one, but he instantly grabbed the health pack. Uh, Soko does have point control now. It looks like it has just changed, uh, reversed. TBS has nobody on point. They did not contest, and Soko has loop one control. See Saxy yeah, pulling so out the sniper. Soko's playing a little too pacifist for to get main control. They're holding back, just taking a few pot shots and then rushing. And I, I think the same thing's going to happen last round. They're going to get just dominated at the end. And here comes the joust. Uh, Saxy gets a kill on point, but he's not quite able to make it on. I'm unsure if Tenderizer's decent clone is on for his loop two. But that is uh, nobody on point for loop two here. So it's all going to come down to loop three. Saxy's pulling out the SMG. Tenderizer also has the SMG. Tenderizer shoots a barrel. Trying to get a kill here. Looks like he's staying back looking for the threes. And he pushes point. And they barely take out TBS's uh, number two, I believe, to grab a round. did bet much better than the first round. They were able to actually maintain point control and uh, there was a few clones even on TBS that were staying back, even third round clones. I'm not sure why they didn't decide to push forward at the last second. I guess they just hoped that their last clones would survive onto the point. Could be that they're just trying to take out the threes and stay safe and protect their clones that are already on point, but it didn't work out for them. Yeah. We got Saxy pushing up hard on this one. He takes him out. He takes out the second clone. Is he going to get on point? 0.1 seconds, he's not going to get on. Just a millimeter away. Yeah, it looked like a knee was slowly sliding over the point, but just not enough for it to register. And neither side has taken out a grenade launcher yet. Yeah, I think we only saw one use of it in the last round in the final loop. But so far, there I would suspect there'd be a lot more of the grenade launcher use on the 2v2 map, but it's really just been SMGs and a rifle here and there. And as we see, uh, Saxy has jumped on a point from the red side and takes out three clones and is holding the, the plate.
And we go into loop three. It's interesting to see, I think the grenade launcher play can be a little bit um, detrimental to your, your own team, so not a terrible idea not to use it. It's just something we're not used to. We have two seconds left. And, oh, Soko just barely gets taken out. TBS is going to take point with a single clone on. And low health as well. He could have easily been taken out and pushed us into overtime. So we see Lux with a sniper here holding back, looking for a pick at home, but neither player is going to peek. He peeks left. He has not made contact yet. He does take 20 points of damage. Um, I think we are lagging out. Are you here? Um, I... Yeah, it looks like everything is frozen. Oh, never mind. Mine's going again. It may just be yours. Were they able to play? No, they, the second loop is just starting right now. Okay. Let me stream mine on Discord in case you need to hop over, which it looks like you might. Is your, it looks like from my watching the stream here, you're just seeing a very slowed down version of what's happening. A solid attempt. Yeah, it looks like they are skateboarding around, possibly surfing. Alright, I'm going to stream mine on Discord. Um, I might be okay uh, now. And we're on loop okay. two. Right between the eyes. Uh we're actually on the final loop right now. It seems like your game for some reason is one round behind. Um I'm on uh, but I think I'm also getting some errors as well. You can come to my screen, it looks a little better on the Discord, but uh, d there does seem to be some sort of technical difficulties between what we're seeing and what they're actually playing. Uh, but it looks like we have TBS, they just took the point and they won this first game here. Three Very to one rounds. And I am getting a message from SoCo that Tenderizer DC'd for the last two rounds. See that. Figure that out before we go forward. If they had someone disconnect before the game could actually finish. So that was the last loop. We could potentially just play a one loop. Hold on. No, that was one, possibly a one round. Yeah, how many rounds was it? Were they out? Um, I believe it was two to one, and then TBS took that for the third round. So they were just out for one. For one round. So we play. One round. We could play one round um, games to. Uh, yeah, we could this just go matchup. again. So let's just Going play one round at a time. TBS wins, then they win. Uh, but it, but we, Soko still has an opportunity technically, since they have one win. Uh, if they get two in a row, then they could take the the game win. Yep. So it is currently um, one on Soko's side, two two rounds on TBS. Do you want to just let them know so that way they know the rules of what's what we're about to do again? Okay. Um, yeah, if you want to message them. And then just set match points to one. And it was Soko teammate left or got DC'd? Um, Tenderizer on Soko got DC'd there. them know now make sure all they're right. all on the same page about it
Hopefully we won't encounter too many server issues as we go on with this tournament. They can change it to be two match points. That way it doesn't even go to a three, potentially. Uh, I mean, go ahead and throw it. To it. But we can just keep it. Do it at uh, one match point because it is possible TBS will take this and then it'll just end this matchup. If TBS doesn't take it, we will do one last game, uh, one match point for it'll be tied two to two at that point. So you just want to do two one match point games? Yeah, might as, might as well just do one. One at a time. Because as, as we saw, at least um, potentially how this will go is TBS might take this round and then we'll move on to the second out of the best of three. Just making sure we have one team who's on the same page. We're just getting the other team, uh, letting them know the same thing. So from what we were seeing that first uh, three rounds there, um, it looks like both sides were getting some good kills. I did see, I was mostly expecting Soko, um, and I was just starting to switch over to TBS whenever we had technical issues. Um, we were seeing some good shots, some good kills from Soko, but they weren't quite able to get on point properly on a number of situations. But we also saw the same thing from TBS. So I'm thinking this is a pretty good um, even matchup, both these teams. Both sides need a little bit better time management. Um, and if they can do that, there could be a lot of pressure on to to put on their opponents. Yeah, definitely both teams seem like they were paying a little bit too far backwards, not being aggressive. They're both waiting and then going to jump at the last minute or take out the opponents as they ran up. But that just led to a lot of them not making it to the point at all or having too many people on the point for them to take out when it came to the final rounds. Yes, and it's not a bad idea to play back, try and um, keep your clones protected, force the opponent to push. Um, and overextend to get those kills. However, both teams are doing it. So it led to a rather um, slow start, and then everything just happened at the very end there, um, the very end of each loop. Okay, so it looks like the other team is aware and they're good with the setup. Uh, so we should be good. Let me just go back over to Spectator. So then just to reiterate, uh, we're doing another game. Uh, it's going to be set to just one round match point. So if the TBS team wins this uh, round, then they've won the whole game because they already had two. If they did, uh, if Soko wins, then we'll play another one to see if they can take the game since they have to win two to take the entire game. Yes, the current uh, round matchup is Soko at one round and TBS at two. So if TBS takes this, we will move on to the second match of the best of three. about to get started hopefully no dcs and again i'm also uh on discord streaming my perspective just in case something happens again with yours or mine we have a backup uh Okay, seems to be loading in now. Hopefully we shouldn't have any issues from this point on. And we're off. Justin versus Violet. Let's have a good clean game. So taking a look at Forgiven's perspective here, we have him pulling out SMG. I believe uh, looks like Lux is taking out the shotgun. 
Forgiven uh, goes off against Soko. Put some ticks down on one of the players. It's hard to tell because they're both Violet. He has 40 HP, he crashes point, he gets taken out. And Soko has point control here. A good start, but there's a lot of opportunities to desync uh, the other team by taking out the players. I believe a lot more people from the first round on the point if they can get those kills uh, early on. So Forgiven is pushing this pack here. He's going to look to take out a two. He, he uh, takes a one down, very low HP. Jumping up one point, two seconds left, trying to get the kill out. And Soko dies. It looks like everyone dies on point, but one of the twos. And looks like either Lux or Forgiven has taken out their partner. I believe Lux did that. A bit that. of a team kill, but it was, I guess, in the in the vein of trying to take out the enemy. It worked, but now they only have one person on the objective at the end of that round. And we have Forgiven. He is playing back with the shotgun right now, probably looking to push point late. They are crashing point now, jumping from home ramp, and it looks like one last shot at the very last second is going to give TBS the uh, round point here, and they're going to win the first match. I thought it was about to go into the first overtime of this tournament here, but we were able to get that last shot off just the last second. I'm not sure what happened to these threes. I believe they are just killed on point the very last second. Looks like Sax was taken out early and Tenderizer is taken out at the very last moment. All right, so that's uh, one game win for TBS. It is a best of three. So we're gonna be playing at least one more. Well, this time it'll just be a normal setup, assuming that we don't have any other uh, technical issues. Okay. Three, two, make sure they change the arena. Perfect. Need and so, given to change teams. <laughs> what's really coming coming down to it is uh, this that last crash. It looks like TBS is opting to push point the last moment, um, using their other clones to distract Team Soko um, and split their attention. And they're not able to get all the kills they need. I think Soko needs to focus the threes a little bit more in that final loop um, and make sure that they dominate more on loop one, loop two, so they have. A little bit more pressure on TBS to turn this around. Yeah, more so than in a 1v1 tournament, since you have so many people uh, in, the, in just any 2v2 game, when you have so many people that could potentially be alive between all the clones, it uh, really comes down to making sure you're doing a lot of damage early on, so that way you don't have to spray a lot of shots or waste a lot of time uh, taking them out once they're actually on the point. Yes. There are twice as many clones as there could be in 1v1 as 2v2, and it's already hard enough to kill three clones in the last second in a 1v1, so you really have to make sure you're putting down damage the entire 18 seconds. So, match two. Um, TBS, if TBS wins this, they will be moving on to the quarterfinals. And for Soko to clutch us out, they need to win the next two matches. Folks. Looks like Lux is taking out a shotgun and Forgiven is using SMG while both members of Soko are using SMGs. They're both pushing the same side here. One of the ones dies. Both of TBS uh, clone ones dies, but one resyncs at mid. And we have Tenderizer on point here. It seems like TBS was maybe hoping either a miscommunication or they were hoping that two versus one, they'd be able to overpower the right side and then push up together. But uh, Soko was able to get the kills on each of them, kind of throwing off their whole balance, leading for a last second push after getting the mention underneath the objective. Yes, and Tenderizer does take out um, one of TBS's twos, but he gets taken out whenever that two resyncs. And again, we're going to see one clone on point holding it. Looks like Forgiven does not quite make it onto the capture plate. Yeah, a little too focused on watching the back and not uh, rushing to the point. He didn't have just enough time to reach it. 
See, Tinderazer gets two good long range headshots. Saxy finishes off um, Lux. Tinderazer is shooting the mid three below. And he has a three behind him who synced at the home point. He's not expecting that. He gets taken out. But blue team clutches it out. Saxy is on point. And as we saw, Forgiveness 2 does not quite make it on point to contest that point, uh, that round. We've seen at least two or three of these rounds come down to the last second kill, where it seems like it's about to go into overtime, but someone's able to squeeze off the last shot and take off the opponent uh, from sitting on the objective. Now, I'm actually surprised. I believe it was Lux who ran to um, the home of Soko and jumped onto point from their ramp. Soko's not expecting that. I think Lux really could have gotten some... Uh, kills or at least serious damage out, but didn't quite happen. Tenderizer takes out that one. He grabs his health pack to make sure he doesn't resync there. Uh, Tenderizer is not going to get on point, and looks like Saxy has died. Nobody's on point for for loop one. Yeah, seeing how uh, timid each team is to rush forward, kind of holding back and going uh, going in at the last second. If you do an aggressive push around to the enemy side, it's something they're probably not looking for or expecting and could give them an advantage if they gave it a shot. You see Lux is pushing right side. He's going to take this health pack and take out this one. He reloads. He's pushing point now. Both twos of Soko are on point. Is Lux going to make it on? He's not. Looks like he got tripped up a little bit on this corner. Almost fell off. Soko's going to have loop 2 control with both their clones. And Lux is holding back. We have Saxy pushing left. Looks like he takes out Forgiven. Both threes are pushing point. He's taking damage from a two. Saxy is. Tenderizer on point, but he's going to contest it because Forgiven's two is on point to bring it to OT. First overtime of any of these games. Looked like Tenderizer just wasn't quite paying attention to who else was on point with him. If he had done that, maybe you could take taken out Forgiven's two and won that round. Just scanning through the map here, it looks like we only have one med kit available, which is on, I think, Soko's side, up in their uh, little base area. All the other ones seem to have already been taken. It looks like every single clone is dead. For loop one. I'm, I suppose, the ones traded. So Forgiven is starting on point with his one here. He's going to... He's not going to pre-fire the three. I think he had to reload. Pushing Soko now. He's gonna get taken out by Saxy. Tenderizer is pushing point with his pistol. He's gonna take out the one and secure a point for loop two. And Saxy is not quite making on. Soko definitely has a bit of an advantage here just by the fact that they have the med kit on their side so they can uh, save that for their third loop here. And Tinderizer uh, gets a quick kill on the three. Sorry. Yeah, yeah I was just saying, if they don't have the uh, fire superiority, that next hit there isn't really going to do much. Lux's three is crashing, but it looks like both threes are alive. Tinderizer took out one of them. Oh, the ones take out the threes. But because Saxy's two doesn't get on point, that's going to go in TBS's favor. It was definitely an interesting play. I didn't see Soko at all try and go for their med kit that was sitting back there. They just tried to rush forward and then they gave it to TBS. Their third loop was able to have enough time when he was still early on to rush over, take the med kit, and then make it back to the point. Yeah, Tenderizer gets a quick kill on the three um, for TBS, and TBS is able to pick up that last med pack. If they had taken it, perhaps it would have gone differently. It's hard to say. I think both threes on Soko were taken out. Yeah, they played a little too aggressively. If they stayed back, took a few more shots, and then used that med kit to their advantage, that could have been a different end. So Lux is chasing Saxy here. He's going to take him down to zero. Um, Tinderizer is going to hold point. Because Lux does not get on.
Looks like both twos are pushing their right side now. Lux is going for a kill, but he gets taken out without getting a single uh, hit on Saxy. Saxy and Tenderizer are on point. They have three clones locked down loop two. Looks like Saxy is putting down damage onto Forgiven. Nailed it. Three seconds. Everyone crashes point. Forgiven's three is coming in, but he's not going to get in. Luxury pushes it to overtime with his three. <laughs> Look like there, he, he was even double checking if he made it on the objective. I saw his character model look down and back up again to see that where his feet were. That was really close. He just barely pushed an OT to stop Soko from taking this round. All the threes are near point with low HP. Forgiven takes out at least one of Soko. Both of the TBS ones are on the capture plate. Yeah, TBS was uh, taking advantage of being more aggressive. We see, uh, saw a nice uh, bunny hop all the way across with a shotgun right in someone's face. Uh, they ended up on the platform, but they both took a, quite a bit of damage doing that. And looking for health packs, I'm not seeing any up. There is one in TBS's home. Tinderizer does get taken out. Lux takes out uh, Saxy's two. And TBS is going to have point control for loop two. Ahsoka could get that med kit since TBS, the second clone, waited quite a bit into the match to take it. If they rushed for it, they could get a brand new health or a restart. Uh, if, but the, since they're both all the way in the back, it may not do much use to them even if they try and get all the way across. Lux gets taken by, the, by a grenade launcher from Tenderizer. First time we're seeing the grenade launcher come out, I believe. I think we saw it once before, but it didn't do much damage in one of the earlier rounds. And, oh, Saxy gets taken out by Tenderizer Grenade Launcher. Oh. At the was very a end. Grenade Launcher shot. Doesn't look like it was cooked at all, and it missed all of the targets that were sitting there. Probably just trying to get a total annihilation going into another overtime, but it missed it all, giving TBS that round to win. It's very unfortunate. Tenderizer was sitting back, just trying to put down damage with these GLs, but he takes out his own teammate in any hope of him contesting for an OT. And that cook grenade that bounces replay. right, that not cook were, grenade Yeah, right in between them right all. Right past him. If he had gotten a direct hit, it would have exploded, but it went right between all of those clones. Even if it did hit them, I'm not sure if it would have had enough time to kill all the clones. Some of them had some pretty substantial amount of health. The amount of time that was left may not have been enough to uh, bring them all the way down. We see Sax to get a kill on this one, but he's not able to make it on point. He's taken out by Lux anyway. And what's looking like is TBS is going to take this match. Soko needs to win these next two rounds to stay in it. Saxy's using the sniper, looking for headshots. He gets a body shot on Lux. Takes him out with a pistol. He pushes up on point, going head to head against Forgiven. And there's going to be a stamina on point for loop two. Looks we'll like the uh, surviving TBS uh, second clone was in the middle of a reload just maybe a few milliseconds to a second away from being able to take another shot off. But in that time, uh, we went into both of them contesting the point. Saxy gets a quick kill on the uh, on Forbidden's three. He takes a health back right before his decent clone can get to it. Saxy's pushing point here. Tenderizer on, but he gets taken out by Lux. And Saxy... Oh. Dies on point from a grenade launcher from Lux. Here comes a new cycle. It looked like a last second grenade launcher shot as he was dying completely wiped the uh, field. The The grenade launcher is very good when it comes to just doing an all brand new reset or pushing it into overtime by spamming a last second grenade onto the objective. And that is really unfortunate for Soko. They had probably the most contention for point there that we've seen so far, and they just all get taken out by GL. Looks like nobody is on point for loop one. At least synced. But they do have, uh, let's see. 
two med kits are still available out there. One on either side. Do you have a health pack up home? I saw. Looks like Saxy is pushing hard on his two, going all the way left. Takes out Forgiven. Sex is on point now. Trying to take out Lux. He gets taken out by Lux. And there's no contention from Soko. On point for the two. Looks like Tenderizer's clone died early to Lux there. I believe we're all starting with fresh threes. Uh, looks like it, yeah. There's a health pack on Soko's side. They would do well to take advantage of that. And there's actually the, some of the most amount of uh, health packs still up in this overtime. There's at least three at the beginning of this one. And it looks like TBS is going to take this. Soko gets taken out on point. Uh, Saxy's three dies. And I did not see Tenderizer's three on point. I'm not sure if he died or was just too far back to contest. It looks to be the ladder. I believe Tenderizer is using the grenade launcher here. Trying to get a last second overtime, but he doesn't quite get the explosion off. That will be TBS 2-0 to zero against Soko. And TBS is moving two quarters. Right. And for our next matchup. We have Jan Dart versus Safe Red. Now these four players are all people we have seen before in tournaments. So we have a better idea of um, what we'll be watching here. And I believe it's going to be a pretty close game. We're getting some invites going. We can get everyone in there. For our seeds, we have Jan Dart at seed number four. Um, Let's put those guys on blue. And then Safe Rack can go on red. And then just looking through the rest of the bracket, uh, looks like there was the match eight team or the match eight uh, competition there. No Sweat won that, the No Sweat team, and they moved on. So they're going to be going against Darth and JP. And then the uh, Oops team with NBD and DeCoops, I believe. Uh, they won their game, and so they're going into match six, waiting for a winner of the other ground as well. Uh, oh, where are you? I th someone are you playing that right now? Looks like I'm getting word that one of the teams is forfeiting. That's going against JP. No sweat um, is forfeiting. It well, seems like it. Let me go ahead and figure this out really quick. If they're not going to play, um, NDB, Oops, and Darth and JP will have to wait for match five to finish so we can cast that one. So let's see. We can have... Yeah, I guess we can uh, double check with the NBD to Coops team and J Darth and JP um, if they want to wait so we can watch Jay and Dart and Safe Rat um, or what they want to do. Um, if NBD and J Darth and JP don't want to wait, then we can just cast match two on the upper bracket. That would be the whoever comes out of Stay Lucky versus TBS and whoever comes out of this match that we're about to cast, Jay and Dart versus Safe Rat. So what would the order of rounds be then? Um, we will be casting Jay and Dart and Safe Rat whenever they are ready. Um, if NBD, DeCoops, and Darth and JP, if none of them want to wait to be casted, mm. we'll just catch, cast Mash 2 instead. Got it. Let me give them that option. <clears throat> So 
So I believe in the last 1v1, we saw Dart Killer, um, Save First, and Rat Liver were in the Challenger tier. We did not see any of those um, games with them in it, but nor did we see Jay last tournament in the Premier tier. So we haven't seen any of these players in a little while, but they are names that we are familiar with, and we have seen a couple of times. Yeah, what is, uh, since when things are kind of getting shifted around, we do have the French uh, casters as well. I'm not sure which game they are on. And if we need to invite them to the same one as well, or invite him, I'm not sure how many people it is. I'm not sure. Um, we do have also two Quantum League keys to give out. Breaking news. Um, we will be doing one key after the semifinals, and then another key after the finals match. Looking like the uh, the Coops team and uh, the Coops team and Darth and JP are fine with waiting. I'm just double checking with that. <clears throat> Um, and then we need to double check what the French caster, which one he wants to join, so we can put him in as well. Um, how many French casters are there? One or two? I am not sure. If there's two, you, there's only three spectators. Yeah. Max, so they'll have to cast MBD and Darth and JP potentially. There is um, or they could cast two. Stay Lucky versus TBS. Yeah, because we're going to have to split up because it looks like there's two of them, so we can't all watch the same one. Uh, so Lucky is saying that they could, the French could cast them. Okay. Looks like we are all in the lobby for Safer at versus Jan Dart. I want to make sure we're not leaving French casters behind. I want to make sure that they're going to be in a, a game as well before we start anything. So we have, so Jay and Dart are going to be on blue side. Um, it looks like the current standings, we have MBD Oops. They're taking uh, first currently in this tournament. Um, well, I suppose this doesn't quite represent very well because not everyone has played their matches or reported them. And it looks like No Sweat did forfeit against Darth and JP. So for the semis on the lower side of the bracket, we do have NBD Oops and Darth and JP. They will be fighting it out to go to the finals. So we will see who makes it out of that in the finals matchup. And Stay Lucky versus TBS. Most likely, um, Stay Lucky is on that team is So Lucky and Stafe. Most likely we will be seeing them in the semis just from um, past experience. Both of those players are pretty good. Um, I don't think we've seen them on a 2v2 team yet. But if 1v1 has anything to say, 
They're both very solid challengers. Sorry for so much of a delay. Just want to make sure that everyone, since we had a, the timing of everything got kind of thrown off, making sure no one's being left out. Because the, let's see, the DeCoups JP matchup six are fine with waiting. We do have multiple, both of our casters want to see that one. So we need to shift who's going to be watching what, but I'm sure which one the French casters are going to be watching. Okay, so they're going to be watching So Lucky, so we should be good. Okay. So I think we can start with ours. They'll go with So Lucky, and then I guess we'll figure out we'll figure out uh, who we want to. One of us can watch match two, the other one can watch match six, and I'm not sure about the final game. But we'll get to that when we get to it. We've already had too much of a delay, so I guess we can get started now. Let them know they had to go ahead to get going. And are both teams ready to go? Seems like it. I, let, I gave them the go ahead. I guess it's just up to the leader to hit start. So, okay, there we go. And here we go. Awesome. We see Dark Killer is pushing left. He has a shiny skin. It looks like he just bought this new update. He takes the health pack. And he's pushing up ramp now. Dark gets taken out by Safe First. And Safe First is the only one on point here. That was a very quick exchange. Did Safe First get a... Yeah, he looks like he respawned. Because he did a rush up to the left side. Got taken out pretty early, but then had enough time to get a med kit and make it back to the objective. And Dark Killer gets kicked, ticked down by an explosion. And he gets killed by a grenade launcher. Brad is pushing up point. He has a GL. He switches to his pistol. Takes out uh, Jay. And point is contested with Dark Killer's one. But he is at half HP. A lot of uh, low health players sitting on the objective there. Wouldn't be too hard in this last round of the enemy team to just take them out with a few of the sprays and SMG. So it looks like Rat puts down some good damage onto Jay, but he is not able to get the kill. Uh, Jay does kill him with one HP left. Last second save. And Dart and Jay both push point. Looks like they have four clones on, five clones on. They take first round. Yeah, they were able to keep most of their clones alive, uh, changing up some saints from the last one. Just, just watching this replay here, it seems like someone took out a few of the uh, med kits that a uh, safe person rat were relying on to resync them on for that last round. We move on to the second round. They are, uh, looks like they are um, grenade launcher shredder, I guess you'd call that. Like a barrel strike, except they use their GL to kill themselves. It. 
So they're looking to get advantage here of being invisible and take out these ones um, while they essentially don't know they're being shot at. So once they save their own lives, those ones will be alive and do damage. Incredible foresight! Hmm. It's gonna be a real interesting strategy. I'm not sure if it's gonna play out. They're always hard to really do effectively uh, when you do any sort of barrel or grenade launch or strap like that. Looks like I'm Dart also and getting... Jay are on point. Oh, yeah, you saw it. Yeah, that's gonna get a note from the chat about the sound. That is a really cool looking skin. That's the first time I've actually seen that, uh, like, chrome looking SMG. That it's, it's shiny. Makes it, makes it feel a lot more fun than just the defaults. So Jace 3 is pushing right here. He's playing this health pad. He takes it early. Uh, and he does get taken out by save first. Save first is behind Jace 2 here, but it looks like... Jay and Dart are going to just completely take point with five clones again. I'm not sure what happened there to save first three. Yeah, that, that was a um, confusing strategy. They tried to use the grenade launcher strat to give themselves an advantage, but it didn't really seem to do much as they still outshined uh, pretty much all of their movements. And Dart and Jay still ended up at the end, even without knowing where everybody is. Uh, for those first two loops. So the problem with the um, suicide strats is that because Safe was the one launching the grenade launcher, Safe's one needs to get taken out before he launches that GL um, to make sure that Rat's one is alive. So that puts you one clone down at the beginning, which means he has to grab a health pack, which can be denied. So it does put you at a disadvantage, um, in a sense. Yeah, if you're going to use the grenade launcher strat like that, uh, you you pretty much have to give up one player since they have to be taken out, as opposed to a barrel strat, but that takes a little bit more time to get to a barrel and have everyone get around it uh, to, before you get taken out by it. And barrels can be exploded early too to deny that um, surprise attack. But it looks yeah. like Jay's 2 is taken out by a GL. Th four, three uh, clones are taken out by a GL from safe first, including his partner. It came down to a joust at the middle. Both had pistols. Safe first just barely made it out. He only had a few health left. Jay's pushing hard on this uh, grenade launcher, trying to take him out, just focusing the two. He gets out with very little health left and takes this. He's going to take this health pack. He's pushing point now, two seconds left. Takes out the clone on point. He's going to shoot at safe first, and safe first gets taken out. Jay and Dart take three rounds and sweep uh, safe rat for this first matchup. Yeah, just knowing the uh, Dart and Jay competitors, I'm not super surprised that they were able to have this much of a dominance over the other players. Uh, the, the other team I wasn't as familiar, so I was going to be interested to see what level they were at, but it, it's kind of hard to beat a, a pairing of Dart and Jay. Yes, I do agree. Um, we haven't seen a ton of, um, at least Rat Liver has not really been in a ton of uh, tournaments yet, so we're not too sure on um, his abilities, but we have seen Safe First in the past, and he has really um, come out to shine in a couple of instances. So Looks like we have a we'll mismatch see. of the teams. Yeah, we'll see uh, if Safe, Safe First can uh, turn this around in these next two games. Are they the right color? Which color was which? I forgot. Um, Jay and Dart need to be blue. Let him. So going to match two here. We have Dart and Jay up one game. Safe first is going to need to take out both of these next two matches. And we'll see how they do. Um, they still have yet to take a round off of Jay and Dart. We've only played three rounds so far, so definitely could happen. Um, but with the amount of dominance that we saw with Jay and Dart's clones on point, having almost five alive to capture uh, almost every round, uh, Safe first and 
and Rat really need to start fragging out more. Yeah, we always talk about how sometimes the round wins uh, can be a little bit misleading to how the actual game was going, but even with the 3 nothing uh, knockout, we still saw pretty much a good dominance from Jay and Dart. So it it's going to be a, an uphill battle mm -hmm. for the opposing team here too. Even when just this one game, let alone two in a row to get them to win. And the first loop begins. Dart is pushing left with an SMG. Pre-fires around the corner, grabs a health pack, and retreats. You hear a lot of grenades going off, but it looks like none of them have landed yet. Jay and Dart are both on point, and they take out safe first as he jumps on. Looks like Rat was taken out as well by Jay, I believe. This is the first time we're seeing this kind of grenade launcher from each team, or from each uh, teammate, just kind of peppering the field. I'm curious if they'll do it again just to put even more chaos. Looks like they are. At least Rat is using AGL to try and put some damage down. He does tick down Dart really low on his two. He tries to get a kill, but he doesn't quite hit it. He takes out uh, Jay's one, though, and looks like we have a contestion on point with Jay's two. It does look like uh, Safe First did save both of their ones in that instance. And Rat's pulling out the grenade launcher again for loop three. It is a good pairing in a 2v2 to have a grenade launcher and an SMG if you can both land the shots. Because if the grenade launcher isn't hitting anything, then you just wasted a lot of time and a lot of, uh, of shots on nothing. And as we see, uh, Safe First grabs their first round against Jay and Dart. Safe first gets a good kill off on Jay's three here towards the end and then crashes point to take out the last clone that's preventing them from getting the capture. It looks like he does kill darts three for that win. It seems that change of strategy there using grenade launchers, holding back, using SMG, uh, definitely they were able to learn from that first game and now it might be a little bit more even of a pairing for this uh, second game. And what we're seeing from Safe First is they are both using grenade launchers on this first loop to pepper the field. Um, I believe we'll see the same similar thing on loop two that we saw last time. And it really worked out for them to put damage down on the opposing team and pepper them. Jay and Dart are not responding in the same fashion. Rat took himself out there at the end as well as the one of the opposing teammates. Uh, did a little bit of damage to the last surviving first clone sitting on the point but I'm not sure if that's going to really help them when it comes to the final round. We're seeing on loop 2, both players on safe first are pulling out the grenade launcher again. That has to hurt. And Jay and Dart are going to have point control here. Rats 2 took out, or potentially Rats 1 took out a bunch of people with that grenade launcher, but he also took out himself, leaving only Jay and Dart on point. Yeah, the only upside to Rat's last second, basically suicide uh, grenade launcher shot, is if the people who are on the point already have low health, and that grenade is just enough to tick them down. But if they have full health, or if there's multiple people, then it's not going to do much. Looks like Jay was taking cover below point here, avoiding the explosions. He's not going to quite make it on point here, and it's going to go into OT because safe first one is contesting. Jay's throwing out oh. some pre-fires. He's going up top. Try and challenge Rat. He does Safe get one first hit. Was killed by a uh, teammate grenade launcher. Who? His first clone right there. Solid attempt. That is unfortunate. That's going to lead to Dart and Jay having loop one point control. Jay escapes point without getting any damage. He is at 65, going all the way back around. It does seem like a lot of the shots on the safe first team are going right onto the point, I guess to discourage any early uh, 
squatters there, but they're not doing a lot of damage since they're, just, they're not rushing the point until the last second anyway. Yeah, Jay and Dart are, uh, they're doing a good job not pushing point until they need to push point because that really does expose you from almost every angle on the map. So those yeah. grenade launchers need to be placed a little bit uh, in different positions to get those kills that they need. Yeah, farther back in hiding quarters. I mean, we're seeing on the map there's a lot of, of used spots that are used frequently uh, that if they knew about, they could just be spamming those areas. And Jay gets a mid-air kill here, but an explosion <laughs> oh. takes out every single clone on point that is from uh, Rats 1 that pushes out into another OT. Yeah, that's the thing with Grenade Launcher. It's so destructive. It can just take out everybody pushing and resetting uh, the game. I mean, now we're in basically just a restart since everybody died just without any med kit. So it's all just going to come down to uh, firing and who can hit their shots better. And without any med packs, that makes it rather dangerous. Looks like Dart's going to have point control here. Rat does not quite make, quite make it on. He does try to launch a last minute grenade again with his one, but does not go off. Yeah, we may need to see Dart and Jay using grenade launchers as well to take out uh, the the spammers in the back. Otherwise, we're going to see potentially a third overtime if someone just shoots a last second Hail Mary grenade at the point. Looks like the way they are countering this is they're trying to play back, but as we just saw, it looks like Jay was taken out up top by a grenade launcher from Rats 2. Dart dies in point from an explosion. And I believe yeah, we're going to see a lot of that point is cleared again. Yeah, it was. I think I think Jay and Dart need to be aggressive and take out the one and two clones with the grenade launchers. Otherwise, we're going to keep ending each round with everyone on points, team and teammates and enemies just dying. Yes, and we see Dart just gets absolutely destroyed by a grenade launcher, barely has any health left. He's playing it safe, trying to take out this three that's pushing onto their side. But he does get taken out by the three. And this explosion is going to leave a one on point. Interesting. At least luckily he wasn't taken out as well from his own teammates, but finally ended that second overtime, giving uh, Safe First the win there. Looks like uh, Safe First was able to barely avoid getting destroyed by that explosion almost miraculously from my perspective. Assault. And we have Safer at on uh, loop one point control. Dodge just barely avoids an explosion. Staying back, looking for these twos. One is pushing him on his left. And he gets taken out by a grenade, but he is on point. Oh. That last minute explosion isn't going to kill anybody. <laughs> Could you some, have some use if maybe there's someone with just a few, like two or three health, but it didn't have enough time for any of the damage to degrade anybody. And Safe First is going to get taken out by his own teammate, Rats1, by an explosion. He's trying to go for this health pack, but he misses the jump. Nailed it. And it looks like Dart and Jay just completely saved all of their clones. And it's had very massive point close. I will say the only upside to the constant use of the grenade launchers is the very satisfying foop sound that comes out every time you hear multiple of them shooting off across the map. Yeah, now using the grenade launcher to put that last minute explosion on point, as we're just now seeing, it was just a little bit too late there to push into an OT. Is an interesting strat, and I'm not sure if it's a good one yet, because it tends to leave the point control to be rather random as to who survives. I guess it can be useful if you know you have a better aiming superiority. You can reset the map into overtime, take out all the med kits, and then just to dominate with your uh, shooting ability. But it seems to be more just like a last second, no thought play. Yeah, leaving a lot of it to just random chance of who survives at the end. Now, I think the reason um, Rat and Say First are going for this strat is because they are kind of uh, playing back. 
and so what they're trying to do is put down enough damage on these clones that the explosion kills them, but allow them enough health whenever they jump on point that they survive it. Which isn't a terrible idea, but it hasn't always been working out for them. Yeah, on paper it's it's pretty genius, but to actually pull that off is Much almost harder. impossible to do consistently. Yes. We'll see if they can uh, use this strat to get this last round. They were able to take two rounds off of Jay and Dart using the strat, so it has been doing them some good. Looks like Jay is rushing these grenade launcher clones to save all of their previously dead allies. Jay's 3 is pushing point here. He's going to contest it, but he's going to die. Save first gets the kill on Jay, and he locks down that point, and we're going to a match 3. That was real interesting. I thought we were going to see another sweep, but they definitely evened each other out. I think that grenade launcher strategy of basically only using grenade launchers for all the rounds helped even the field since it's so much harder to counter against. The grenade launchers did a really good job of ticking down Jay and Dart um, just enough so that way Safe First and Rat Liver um, could win those gunfights. And I think Jay and Dart, if they really want to contest against that, they're going to have to be a little more aggressive, rushing forward and taking out uh, those grenade launchers before they're able to do those last second damages. Um, because if they stay back, then the grid grenade launchers have the advantage of being able to just kind of spray all across the map. So moving into this final matchup between these two competitors here. Um, we have Jay and Dart in blue, good, and we're getting connected. So in the last game, whoever wins this game uh, is moving on since it is best of three and they each already have one win. I think the So Lucky game has a winner as well, I'm just taking a look. At the other stream as well of the leaderboards and so they're just waiting on the winner of this match to know who they're going to go against well it could go either way here both uh rounds it seemed like safe first and rack kind of uh took match two by a larger margin than uh, maybe we would have expected considering the first match up here so it really could go either way Dark Killer is pushing point, he takes out safe first. Both Dart and Jay's ones are on point for this contestion, and Rat Liver is left below point. Not contesting, but still alive. It seemed like uh, safe first and Rat sort of overextended for using grenade launchers. They were pretty easily taken out since they pushed so far forward into Dart and Jay's side. Oh, and Dark is taken out by a grenade launcher right after he takes his health pack. That is not good. Uh, Rack gets taken out. Feeling. And loop 2 is contested. It looks like Rat is using a GL again. I think he's been using it every single round since this last match started. Yeah, I believe he has. Or there's been at least one member on their team who's using the grenade launcher every round. I believe it's been Rat, and he has been getting some good damage out. And he takes out, this is going to push to another OT. Oh, man. <laughs> Just barely saves point there. Unfortunately, if he had been on point, he could have taken the round instead of pushing to an OT. But he wasn't there, unfortunately. Dart and Jay do may have an advantage because i think both of their threes were taken out and safe first and rats threes are still out there so they'll get fresh new spawns but with the grenade launcher it kind of adds a, a bit of luck and chance into the strategies here and as we saw in loop one safe rat does have both their clone ones on point with i believe a lot of health points And uh, both Safe First and Rat Liver are using grenade launchers again on their loop two. We see Jay's two push, take out one of the ones. And 
can save the first crash's point, but he gets taken out by J. Point is contested again. And as you were saying, safe rat, both their threes were on point, but they are able to escape here just because, um, actually, they, they pushed into J and Dart's side. Jane Dart probably aren't expecting this. It'll be interesting to see how this plays out. Safe first is going towards point here. Takes out Jay. He targets uh, Dart but does not get the kill. This is going to another Man. OT. Because so Safe first ones get on. Again, a lot of it, that one wasn't even down to uh, an annihilation of the point from a grenade launcher. It just came down to there was too many enemies still alive and not enough time to take them all out, even if you're rushing at the last minute. Yes. And unfortunately, it was uh, Safe Rat's Clone Ones that actually pushed that into an OT. And those are the clones that are most exposed, typically, because there's two more loops on top of the first one that they can be killed from. Yeah, it's rare you see a first round clone taking the point pretty like on their own. Usually Even. those are the first ones taken out. Especially two. Going into OT2 of loop two. Uh, Jay gets taken out by an explosion from safe first. Dark Killers 2 gets taken out explosion again from rat liver. And Safe Rat has point control in loop 2 again. These grenade launcher explosions are really punishing Jay and Dart. And it's sort of, it's it's hard to develop a strategy around a uh, grenade launcher because since they can be timed so well and you can go, you can shoot pretty fast and they can take out a lot large areas. It's, it's not much you can do. It's very hard to keep track of so many grenade launchers on 2v2. And we barely missed a second, a third OT here. I think Darts 1 was contesting until he's taken out the very last moment. Looks like uh, Jay's 3 was taken out by gunfire and Dart was taken out on point while crashing it. Giving this round to Safe Rat. So it looks like uh, Jay and Dart are taking out the grenade launcher now. They're looking to switch up their strategies and do the same thing that Safe Rat is doing to them. Doesn't work out for them loop one, but both ones of Safe Rat are extremely low. Yeah, I'm curious if a if we if we just see all grenade launcher from every player all rounds, how that kind of gameplay would go and adapt, since you're just trying to get as much damage and, and control. Uh, as opposed to, like, specific spray and firing of an SMG. And what we're seeing here is Safer has point control again. There's a last minute explosion on the point, but not enough time for it to develop into any sort of damage. I don't believe Jandar were using the GL on loop 2. One of them might have, it was hard to tell where a lot of them were coming from. So Rat takes a health pack, he is looking to push this three. But he gets, he has one HP left, he is taken out by Dart. Oh, so Oh, and close. Dart just doesn't get on point. Just a, like an inch away or less. And he was running. If he had boost jumped, maybe he would have been able to get on because he just needed just a slight amount of uh, distance. Yeah. That's super unfortunate. And with all this grenade launch use, we are seeing a lot of it in uh, discussion of it in the chat, uh, as well as some possible changes to the future that they may be changing of uh, banning or making it only a one uh, one use per loop so 
this sort of gameplay may be, if we look back at it in the future, maybe somewhat outdated form of the meta, and it'll change when some changes happen to it. Yeah, I think the, the GL probably does need some changes. It is such a, um, it's so prevalent in the meta now that really what you're seeing is on these uh, matches are field peppering, uh, which takes out most of the clones, and then whoever's left on point just gets a last minute frag with their pistols. Yeah. We haven't seen any last uh, minute point explosions though, which is good. Because those typically sort of almost push have to have a gentleman's agreement to not use the grenade launcher as much. Uh, otherwise, it turns into one of these games where there's multiple overtimes, um, lots of team killing, and last minute just annihilations of the point. Looks like safe's first three is low. He's gonna crash point here. A lot of safe rats clones are on. Jay and Dart just can't get on point without dying. Safer takes a second round. Jay and Dart, um, contrary to what we saw for his match, may get knocked out here. Yeah, it's definitely an interesting turn of event. I was definitely putting my uh, putting my money down on Dart and Jay, but yeah, the the rounds that we've been seeing playing, especially with the grenade launcher, has changed my opinion on it. Especially since they're only one round away from taking this and moving forward. Safe Red switch to using the GL um, definitely turned these games around for them. Jay and Dart just need to try and survive these explosions, which is much easier said than done, but they had to figure out something there. Yeah, this use of grenade launcher makes me curious for the final round if the, uh, the competitors are going to try and ab abuse the grenade launcher as well, or if they're going to try and keep it a little more even and stick with maybe SMGs, maybe the occasional grenade launcher. Jay's 2 gets ticked down almost zero. He does not get the health pack relay. Uh, but he does get the left health pack, and he is moving up on a point. It looks like he is taken out by an explosion. Safe Rat is going to have point control here again. We see some decent clones on point from Jay and Dart. If they can just save those clones, they can contest with them. And we see, uh, and some people are saying in the chat that a sniper would be a good counter. The only problem with the sniper is that uh, the grenade launcher, you can hide behind cover and shoot a lot of shots lobbing over. And with the sniper, you have to physically see the person. The fire rate's a lot slower, a little bit harder to aim. So it is, it would be a good counter. It's just a little harder to to pull off as, as easy as the grenade launcher is to use. And as we see here, oh. It looks like uh, Rat takes out himself with his own grenade launch in the beginning. I'm not sure if there's health packs left for him to resync here. We are going to overtime because uh, Jay's 2 was able to contest point with very little HP. Let's see how this O2 goes with no health packs. And this is really interesting. So Rat takes himself out at the very beginning here at that grenade launcher. That's going to be a real big problem if anyone else spawns next to him. I guess we'll see what's gonna happen here. What a paradox. Oh, it looks like uh, his one was actually up on point here when he get, takes himself out. So it's not gonna be an issue for him spawning. Rat does, he is pulling out the SMG now and he takes out uh, Jay and Dart. But he isn't, he doesn't get on point, but he did take out the opposition. So as long as he can keep that two alive, uh, Safe Rat does have uh, good pressure on point. And Rats 3 gets ticked off, uh, ticked down pretty low. He's using a sniper here. Going up top, looking for the threes. And everyone's crashing points. Safe first is going to sweep Dart and Jay this match. Yeah, that was a definitely interesting end to it. I, I was suspecting Dart and Jay, but they were able to turn it around. Now, safe person route are the one that would be moving forward. Yeah, the first matchup we saw Jay and Dart sweep um, Safe Rat. Second matchup was 
a little bit closer with safe first and rat coming out and then now they just swept jay so they completely turned this matchup around all right uh so that gives the opponents for the stay lucky team now have a winner that they're going to be going against and then the darth and jp and the decoops team I've been waiting, so they're going to get started as well. I believe we're going to split up those casting. The French uh, casters will take one, and we'll take the other one. And that way we can move along a little bit, since that one took a bit longer than we probably thought it would. Yeah, and we will be moving to NBDB Oops versus Darth and JP. And this will be, I believe, this is the matchup that was in the last 2v2 finals. Was it not? I don't remember, but it sounds like it might have been. I'm pretty sure... MBD and DeCoops were facing off against Darth and JP, and Darth and JP won. So this will be a really interesting game to cast. So if I refresh the bracket here, it looks like Stay Lucky did win out against uh, TBS. Safe Bat Rat will be going up against uh, So Lucky and Stafe. We will see who makes it out of that whenever we cast the finals. going to figure out who's going to be doing which game and then we can start inviting people i think uh we'd be doing mbd and darth right looks like it, yeah it's, it seems like they are the french casters are going to be doing the stay lucky versus safe rat team semi-final match and so we'll be doing the darth jp mbd to coops match so we can start inviting people and get that one going since okay. they have been waiting a bit longer. And uh, let's go and throw Darth and JP on blue. Darth and JP are second seed in this tournament. And MBD Oops is seed three. So very closely seeded, and I think that's going to reflect in the game we're about to watch. And I'm getting word from JP uh, that... This game will not be a grenade launcher fest, uh, so hopefully we'll see just a little bit more of the standard gameplay. SMG may be an occasional grenade launcher, but nothing like we saw in that last one where we got into a lot of overtime and um, point basically dem demolishing. Yeah, and I think honestly that will uh, lead to a more interesting game to, to watch as well, just because the grenade launchers, like you said, so random in deaths. Yeah, it'll be a different... Um, it'll be a little easier to tell who's doing better and which strategies are, are coming forward. If it's not just coming down to the random chance of if the grenade launcher is going to do enough damage or not. It's waiting for invites. I'm not sure if you're in there yet. I just got an invite. I can send you one. I did as well. Okay. Looks like we are about ready. I think we just need MBD in the lobby. So speaking of GL counters uh, on the sniper, like you were saying, sniper does seem like it would be a good counter to grenade launcher. However, you really need that line of sight. The grenade launcher benefits from having an arc with its projectile and allows you to stay behind cover while shooting it. So it really almost forces you to push the grenade launcher to get that kill off. And as we saw, Dart and JP were trying to do that, but they were just getting taken out by the Loop 3 clones who opted to use SMG because that push does overexpose your um, clone. And while pushing with a sniper uh, is possible, it's not as much stopping power as SMG would be in a push. So you almost have to 
choose between the two. There's stay back and snipe or push with an SMG or even push with a shotgun. But pushing regardless is always going to overexpose yourself. So it's just a really hard um, meta to counter, honestly. And I think that's why it's so prevalent. It looks like we have everyone in the lobby. Um, if you can switch to spectator, we have NVD. And okay, so we'll have NVD and the coops on blue. I'll switch around the overlay and we can get started. Um, and you are muted, I guess, if you don't know. Yeah, I was just dealing with something, but I'm back now. Okay, cool. Just making sure you weren't talking to yourself, as I do sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I just figured you were ignoring me the whole time. <laughs> good luck's coming out from MBD. I think yeah. we're going to have a gentleman's game here with uh, no grenade launchers, so that'll be cool to see from what you're telling me. Here we go! Looks like Decoops is playing mid on his health pack. He does take it early and free fires. Pushing left, looking to get a kill on Darth. Both players take themselves down a little bit. Darth gets more damage down. Decoops dies. Going for it. And Darth and GP have loop one point control. It looks like uh, Decoops took JP's health pack, but very late. And he's not on point, so he's not really going to contest anything with that. Seems like we did have a grenade launcher shot right at the end there, but it didn't do enough damage to take anybody out. Okay, so we are seeing a grenade launcher come out. Looks like JP is using it. Headshot. And that grenade launcher is going to take out one of the two. Looks like uh, MBD's grenade launcher actually clears point. So it looks like we will be seeing some GLs come out in this match. Yeah, they're gonna have to try and take out MBD's first clone there. Uh, if they don't want to take any last second damage. And it looks like not every clone is using grenade launcher, so perhaps that what that's what they meant whenever they said it's not gonna be a grenade launcher fest. Um, yeah, I think grenade I, launcher use is fine, but when it's every round by every player, then that's when it leads into much more chaos. Mm -hmm. And I think the grenade launcher is just almost too powerful too for these teams, especially whenever there is a cash prize involved on top of glory for them to completely forego. Yeah. I mean, all the weapons do have their uses. So to, to say that you shouldn't use them at all is, is basically limiting yourself from all the options, but overuse of one weapon is what leads to it seems like they've corrected that. So we saw the Coops rush this home pack. It looks like he is trying to deny a resync in the future. He does get on point here, and it looks like both JP and Darth are completely ignoring him because they know they can take him out. Yeah, MBD would be a pretty easy target to take out. It looks like he rushed all the way to the enemy's uh, spawn area, took their med kit, and then went up top. It'd be pretty easy just to wait for him to run towards you, take him out, and then you don't have to worry about him going to the point. And the health pack resync was so late that it could also easily be be denied. JP does take out um, MBD here, puts down damage and takes out the Coops' too. You gotta and get MBD off of the point there. All they have to do is take out that med kit mm -hmm. that's on their side since he was taken out uh, before he could get to it. Yeah, so even though he is contesting that point on loop 2, it's not going to matter in loop 3 because we're going to see one of these two. Doesn't look like either of them are ready to go for it. Never mind, there we go. Um, looks like they do not actually deny his recent... Oh, never mind. It looks like... Um, 
Darth and JP score that. Darth actually pushed the home pack, just like um, MBD did. In a game like this, it's a little easy to follow the, the mindset and the strategies of uh, each of these teams being able to, for us and them, predict uh, what they need to be doing from loop to loop to counter the previous ones. And MBD and JP are going to be taking out the grenade launcher here. MBD is rushing this pack again with the same strategy. Didn't quite work out for them last time, but we'll see how it goes. MBD's crashing point looks like he is being ignored again as Darth is pre-firing for future clones. Yeah, I don't know. That's very interesting. Um, it seems like NBD and Takoops possibly have a worked out strategy since NBD is doing the same thing, rushing the enemy uh, spawn. But I'm not sure how it plays out for them since it's very easily counterable as, when anytime you overextend like that. I think they're looking to potentially try this again, take out, take this last round um, in their favor. We'll see if it goes in their favor here, and it looks like it's not going to. Oh, wait a minute. The one they ignored is still on point. And they never and took again, him out. He could take him out in this last round, take out the med kit, shoot him as he comes there, and then wow. he's out of the game. It did play off for them. To, perhaps it's something to pull pull their attention away so the third round can come in and maintain control, but it doesn't seem like that's what's going to be happening. Yes, and, and uh, my mistake actually, for a moment I did think that was loop 3, so JP and Darth are going to take him out and take this last point to sweep and be dupes. Yeah, it's possible, I know DeCoops uh, was practicing a lot, I was watching some of his streams, and even earlier just today I think he was streaming a 2v2 uh, matchmaking. Uh, so they, it's possible that their strategy they were working on worked against either random players or whoever else they were scrimming against. But against JP and Darth, they pretty easily countered that. They're going to have to change it up if they're going to want to see some better results for this second game. We'll see how they decide to change up their strategy. Something definitely needs to happen because they were swept by Darth and JP. But what they're going to do is I'm curious to see. JP and Darth, we know, have such strong dominance in this game uh, with their shooting and just with knowing the game and their strategy. So MBD and DeCoops really have to step up somewhere, whether that's getting more kills or outplaying them health packs or something else. I'm not sure. Let's have a good, clean game! So looks like both uh, Dukoops and MBD are taking out the grenade launcher here. Dukoops takes mid health pack and he's moving left to avoid these explosions. Neither player has gotten a kill on these ones yet. Until right now, both players actually take out both of JP and Darth. It looks like there's a very low health uh, for one of the players sitting there. Yeah, now those kills were late in the round, so those ones could be denied the kills. Darth gets taken out by an SMG from the Coops. He doesn't have a health pack to sync with, so he's just going to get on point. Put down some uh, bullets. Hopefully, if he's alive, it'll get some kills. I'm seeing Darth barely avoid an explosion. He's looking to target MBD's three. He does take him out. There is no health pack left for MBD to grab. 
Darth has 100 HP, he's crashing point now. Takes out a 2. And a Koops 3 is not going to get on point, so he is no threat. Especially with this many blue clones on. Yeah, JP and Darth were able to take out, uh, I think, the Koops and MBD, though, pretty early, their third clone ones, or at least keep them at bay for most of it. So they just had to keep track of the previous clones and then make it to the point, which they did. And it looks like MBD and Koops' three last round did get taken out from a grenade launcher from JP and Darth's one. Up at home ramp. So we're seeing some free fires go out as expected. Darth crashes point, takes out one of the clones on the opposing team, and completely ignores MBD's one, who does overextend again for the health pack, as we saw previously. JP and Darth have countered that every time he's done it, so I wouldn't be surprised if they counter it again. It's like Darth is playing ramp. He's looking for a kill on the Coops. He does get it on the Coops' too. Gets on the point, clears point. And NBD's one we can expect to be taken out in this third loop. And neither team has a strong grasp on the objective there at the end. Each round is kind of ending with either one or two players and then being low health. Even that one, uh, I think it was just one person, but they had super low health, so. So MBD is going with a shotgun here. He's getting some good damage down, but it was long range. He's going to get taken, almost taken, he is finally taken out. And point is contested. It actually went into MBD to Koops' favor here for a moment. Um, some that, somehow MBD Koops was able to take points with two of their clones, but one of... Uh, JP and Darts ones were there to contest. MBD is putting out grenades. He does get taken out on point and looks like Dekoop was taken out as well by Darth. Interesting. Uh, are there any med kits available in this overtime? I don't believe there are. Getting around, I don't see any. MBD gets some ticks down with his grenade launcher on JP. Looks like he is going for a two loop grenade launcher strat. JP2 is able to hold point here. I'm not sure if Dekoops' one makes it on. It's hard to tell sometimes when the spectator mode uh, doesn't sometimes show which people are actually on the objective if they are or not. Yeah, at the top it looks like he wasn't on, but he was so close to it. I mean, I'm not sure. We're just going to see how it uh, ends up. So JP is looking to target MBD's 3 who is pushing him. JP is low, but he does get the kill. He jumps on point here, has the pistol out. And it looks like Dekoops' 1 never did get on point. He was so Real close. close. And I believe JP and Darth, oh shoot, uh, the overlay is a little bit wrong here. JP and Darth and the Koops, they did switch teams and colors. I'll just fix the overlay. So JP and Darth are the one with one game win so yes. far, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so the overlay is up to date. So yeah, if uh, JP and Darth do take this last round, they are going to win the semifinal um, and completely sweep MBD into Koops. Yeah, I think in the first game that they played, the Koops and MBD, they they had a seems like a set strategy that they kept going, but it was not helping them, and it, it really kind of set them behind for the second game. Now they have to win two in a row, and they have to change up their their pre-planned strategy. They, they, they didn't seem super prepared for the type of uh, resistance JP and Darth put up. Yeah, and JP and Darth are really hard competitors to go against. So loop 2 here, we're seeing a contestion on points. 
This is going to be a hard mountain to climb for MBD and the Coops. They have to win every single round and then a, another game on top of it. And so far they've been getting a little outplayed by uh, the Coops and or Darth and JP. The Coops' 3 is taken out by Darth's 3. And Darth and JP are in a trash point. They have four clones on. This is going to give them the match and the, the matchup as well. Oh. JP and Darth team is going to be moving on to the finals. Uh, let's see if the so lucky safe rack game has a victor. Looks like it did. Looks like the stay lucky team made it to the finals as well. So now the final matchup is going to be Darth and JP versus the stay lucky team. So lucky, Stafe, Darth, and JP. That's going to be a match. Now this is when we run into a bit of a problem. <laughs> Since there is four um, people Anubis said that casting. one of them is going to be... Um, one of them is going to be in the game and the other is going to be screen sharing. Okay, so that solves that problem. Um, we do have some keys as well. Uh, for the game, some yes. quantum lead keys, and I think now would be a good time to give away one of them. So we'll be doing one. We do actually have the giveaway bot working. Uh, cross your fingers that I didn't just jinx that. Do so we have just just two keys in total today. Yes, two keys. So we're going to give away one now, and then one after the conclusion of the finals. So I'm going to open the giveaway here. Um, So we'll do that, and the giveaway is now open. So type in Quantum League, all lowercase, one word into chat, and you will enter the giveaway to win a Quantum League key. So will give you a, a copy of uh, Quantum League for free. Um, if you do have the game already, I would ask to allow people who don't have the game to get in on this um, giveaway. But if you do have the game and you do enter the giveaway, if you give it to a friend who doesn't have it already, that is all right too. Looks like uh, potentially for this finals match, they're going to be playing no GL. Which will be interesting. We'll see if that holds up. <laughs> so yeah, we'll see if in the heat of the moment they decide to change that. We'll see how it goes down. Um, this is a tournament. It isn't illegal to use it, but you know, if you agree not to, then you do it as I would say bad sportsmanship in a sense. But we'll see. I think it'll be a good matchup regardless. <laughs> Seems like we only have one person entering. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it just another minute. See yeah. if anyone wants to enter this tournament, um, or not tournament, sorry, the giveaway. Type in Quantum League, all lowercase, one word, and I will be drawing here in about 30 seconds. So. so right now, you have the best odds if you want to get it. Right now, there's only one person, so they'll pretty much guarantee. Uh, but if you join, then you get a 50-50 chance if there's just two of them. <laughs> All right, so it looks like drum roll, please. We'll see who wins this one. We can draw the It'll giveaway be a real, here. real hot contested item here. And it's Korak. What wow. are the odds, honestly, that he won? Congratulations! Won so I'll be sending you a whisper on Steam with your code. Um, set to pull that up. Looks like the players are getting ready to start. Um, okay. Getting you some get invites us... sent out, I believe. Let's see. Go ahead and uh, bring us into that lobby while I send uh, Korak this. Just need code. to figure out uh, which one of the French casters is going to be in the game, so we know which one to invite. 
And Quark, if you can just let me know that you received that. I whispered it to you. Awesome. Congratulations, my man. Enjoy Quantum League for free. And we do have one more key to give away here. So out of everyone viewing, um, we'll need some of you to enter this next one. <laughs> <laughs> and again, if you already have it, uh, you can enter and just make sure to give it away to a friend. Mm -hmm. The goal here is just to get some more people to Quantum League, try out the game, get the uh, population up a little bit, share the love. So. Uh. And we'll look at the bracket here. I did just get an invite. And we have Darth and JP and Stay Lucky in this tournament. Four, five, six. There's one more. And these teams are seated number one, number two. So. Um, Again, the seeds are doing a good job predicting this bracket. That doesn't always happen in all the tournaments, but it has seemed to happen pretty um, often with Quantum League. Seems like everyone's in. They just need to change the teams. The mismatch again. It looks like Stay Lucky is going to be on Team Red. Darth and JP on blue. Oh, wait. Do we still have a mismatch here? Um, we do, and this is a best of five, by the way. The wrong person keeps changing teams. Well, they keep changing. Different people keep changing, but it's like the wrong setup each time. Uh... Oh, there we go. We actually have So Lucky and Stafe on blue and Darth and JP on red, so I'll switch that around. Um, and we're good to go. This is a best of five for the finals. <clears throat> And are both teams ready? I'm giving them the go ahead. Let's see, so lucky's in charge. And they're getting started. And yes, this is best of five. And uh, they, they are competing. Uh, first place gets $100 worth of Steam gift cards split between the two players. Second place gets $40 worth of Steam gift cards split between the two. So already they're both coming out with some kind of prize. It's just going to be determine who gets number one and the bragging rights that come along with it. We did see JP and Darth win the last 2v2. <clears throat> so we'll see if they can hold their crown or if they're going to lose it to uh, stay lucky. Looks like the server timed out here. Go. Okay, happened with one of the other games as well. Hopefully, it should be fine. And we're in. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the finals match.
Stay lucky versus Darth and JP. So we're seeing SMGs coming out. Darth does rush this health pack and pre-fires to try and get a kill or damage. He's staying back now. Looks like a barrel explosion went off. Going for it. Darth uh -uh. doesn't quite get the kill on um, Stafe that he was shooting at and he, he dies on point. That was interesting. I'm not sure which player it was, either Darth or JP. They had an opportunity to go for a med kit on the right side, but they didn't do it, and they instead rushed with very low health, and they were taken out pretty quickly. I'm not sure if he's hoping to save that for the next rounds, or if he just didn't think he had enough time to do both, but he, it, it didn't give him much uh, opportunity to control the point there. Yeah, and as we're seeing in the second loop, uh, Solik and Stafe actually have complete point control with all their clones so far on point. Um, I believe all of them are over half health as well, or at least half. Looks like Darth rushes mid. He does get taken out by uh, So Lucky. So Lucky's looking to get kills on point. He does push on with 16 HP. And they have five clones on. Um, and only five because So Lucky's one takes out his own two. It would have been and a six clone like they, capture. They took out all of the clones of JP and Darth. It wasn't even that they just didn't make it to the point in time. They all got eliminated uh, with, you know, a few seconds to spare. That was a very interesting round. Um, I, I would say I don't I didn't expect uh, Darth and JP to get killed that much. I expect a little bit more contention there, but we have a lot of gameplay left to see. Yeah, I was expecting that as well to be a back and forth, possibly even an overtime right away, but not what we saw. And just as we're saying that, looks like uh, JP and Darth do take loop one with both their clones. Almost full HP. So they are bringing it back against Stay Lucky. It's like Darth and JP are taking out clones. Uh, so Lucky does get taken out by Darth. And we're looking at almost a complete reversal here. Yeah, it's interesting. It's possible JP and Darth were just trying to feel out the first round to see what kind of strategies they were going to be doing and uh, how to counter them. And now that they've somewhat learned, they've been able to turn it around. So so lucky he's playing safe here. He's um, looking to get a pick on Darth. They are firing, but no many, not many shots are landing. So lucky pushes in. He's got. Both uh, clone threes on him, and he can't do anything about it. We just saw a complete reversal here, almost. Darth and JP now have five clones on point. This is definitely going to make this final game super interesting, since uh, they seem to kind of if, if this continues, we'll see a back and forth for this entire not just rounds but games. Definitely going to be a good matchup on all these games. JP's putting a little bit of pre fire down the mid. Off to the right side. And he's targeting So Lucky, but he does not get the kill. So Lucky kills him. Both Darth and JP have died. The decent clones are on point though, and with uh, Stay Lucky's one so low, those could be easily saved. It's like so lucky, lucky takes this health back here, contesting JP. JP does get the kill on him, looking to get a kill on Stafe, takes him down low. Darth is going to finish him off. 
Doth and JP have loop two point control and it comes down to the last loop. JP takes out a barrel early to save one of his clones, it looks like. Takes so lucky down to very low. He is finally taken out by Darth. JP grabs a health pack to avoid a resync. He's looking at so lucky now who did resync at his helm pack. He does get the kill on him. JP is going to take this round. Yeah, that was interesting at the end there. I think that was so lucky, or it's hard to tell which one was which. They were jumping at the point at the last second. They could have potentially gotten those three kills, but they were just outgunned. Um, even though the three against him had pretty low health, he didn't have enough time to take them all out. And actually, as we saw early in uh, loop three, JP took out that barrel. Um, and in this replay, we saw how many clones were inside that blast radius. He saved a lot of his uh, clones' lives by taking that barrel out early and uh, stopping the, the kills. And that's the kind of map awareness you got to have, especially in a 2v2, so much things going on. Sometimes there's some easily preventable deaths that if you just notice, then it can uh, really save you for those final loops. Yeah, and that's the one issue with um, shooting barrels to get kills. It's really only effective on loop 3, um, because loop 2 and loop 1, it is deniable. Yeah. JP's contesting his health pack. He is going to get it. And he also takes out the state. His 2, he's now just targeting these ones with low health. And he takes point uh, almost by himself. I think Darth was taken taken out by maybe one of the yeah. Stay Lucky's ones. Very low health could be taken out uh, at the last second by one of the final loops, or if you just do some early damage on him before he can get there. So Stape is firing down mid here. He's trying to put damage down on the three. He takes the one down a lot. Takes the health pack to avoid a resync. And he's at 33 HP now. Darth did some good damage to him, but he kills Darth. He's crashing point now. He targets... Sorry, that was JP. He targets Darth, kills Darth on point. He's oh, not going to get the kill on Darth's there. two. So close. We go to OT, and Stay Lucky has both of their threes on point, I think. I believe so. There's definitely a lots of uh, ghosts here on the point, or near the point. No health packs up. Stafe and JP are duking it out. JP gets the kill. There's a bit of a battle between uh, this yellow barrier there. I think it blocked a lot of shots, giving an advantage to either Darth or JP's side over there. I see a lot of twos on point. I think there is one three on from S Stay Lucky. Looks like So Lucky's 2 is moving back around behind, trying to get a flank on them, but did not work. A solid attempt. And Team JD is going to have this point cap. Let's see what loop 3 brings us. Looks like Stafe's 3 is on point with almost 1 HP here. He does get a kill on a two. Able to run away, save himself from being taken out from a lot of pre-fires. And he is, shot he is alive, but as we just saw, JP actually took out both of uh, Stay Lucky's threes. So they are likely going to take this point, and they do. Good point there. All right, that gives the first game win to the Darth JP team. Uh, pretty close, lots of back and forth of overtime. Uh, but they we're still able to come out of it three to one. Still need to win two more games though, as this is a best of five. And that was a close matchup. I would not be surprised if all of these games are going to be that close. I, I think it could either go close the entire time or one of the teams is going to pick up a strategy from the other, be able to counter it, and then we might see some kind of a shutout. Um, seeing as they did win 3-1, to one, and we did see some uh, some people's strategies countered better than maybe the first round, so it's just going to come down to who can adapt. And 
There we go. So Lucky is ticking down Darth. Does not get too much damage on him. He's waiting out this pre-fire and he's going for point now. He tries to take out JP but does not get the kill because Darth takes out him before he can get the last bullets. JP only survived with three health though, and I don't think at any point he got any uh, health kit, so he could be taken out even if you just pepper him a little bit at the beginning and hope that your last clone uh, finishes the job. Looks like Darth is contesting health pack, but he dies to Stafe. We're looking at a point crash here that's going to go into Stay Lucky's favor. Although, So Lucky's 2 is extremely low. It's like almost at 1 HP there. They basically just swapped statuses from that first loop where they had two players, one with super low health. First one, it was uh, Darth and JP, I think, and then this next one was uh, So Lucky and Stafe. And as we just saw there, Stafe's 3 just took out his own 1 on complete purpose. I think he was trying to avoid some sort of a team kill. Or maybe a barrel strat? Or suicide strat? I'm not sure. Oh, it's so. Steve misses the health pack, so he's not gonna be able to get on point here, and he can't get the last kill. That was an unfortunate, just barely missing that um, resync that he needed to get on point in time. Yeah, I'm not sure why Steve took out his one early. He definitely did it on purpose to avoid something, but I think we missed what happened there. Did the uh, team colors change from the last game? Yes, they did, and I updated the overlay for it. Okay. So, Stafe takes his health back, and he is barrel stratting with his one. Wait, well, never mind. He shot the barrel, looked like he was barrel stratting, but he did not get caught in the explosion. Perhaps that's for the future. Last second save. And huh. look at that, Sulky's one comes in from behind. Uh, I don't think JP and Darth expected that, but... He did overextend, so that could be an easy kill for them. As I looked like it was so lucky was peppering both of them from behind, but he didn't kill either of them. And then when it came into the rush at the last second, they still were able to survive. And I think it looks like Stave wasn't going for a bill shot with that kill with his one, or that explosion with his one. I think he's just trying to avoid some sort of a push. And Stave is on point here. The only clone on point in loop two. Yeah, last second push, he was able to take out the uh, first two clones of the blue team. JP's three is playing home ramp, putting down some serious damage on stage two. He gets the kill off. He's getting hit now by multiple p places, but he has a health pack. Looks like he's crashing point now. He. I'm not quite sure what happened there. There's so many kills at the last second, but JP and Darth take that round. It'll be interesting. We may just see a complete shutout for this game. We'll have to see how Stay Lucky answers that. So he's playing safe with his one, because that is the most vulnerable of the loops. He does get taken out by JP, who pre-fires him a little bit. But Stafe is going to clear point and take it. And the series score is 1-0 on uh, Darth and JP's side. Uh, that is at the top of the overlay. Right to the left of QLC for you guys to look at. 
Darts 2 crashes point, he takes out um, Stapes 1. Team JD had two clones on point. This is interesting, we haven't seen any uh, grenade launchers in a while. I believe it's just been SMGs. Well, I think they did agree not to use the grenade launcher for those finals. Looks like both teams are honoring that. I don't know if that's... I guess they want it to be as equal as possible without spamming the grenade, but I'd be curious to see how that would change what's happening here. Oh, and we're going to see an OT oh, here. Stapes 1 just sneaks in with probably about 5 HP. It's always so frustrating Ten. when they're one shot away and you just don't have enough time. He does get taken out. He's going for this health pack, but he misses the jump twice, unfortunately. He's going for a third jump, and he there makes he it. Goes. He gets the health pack, but that is a late sink. I think uh, Team JD are going to be able to deny that from him. Yeah, wasted a lot of time. Both of Stay Lucky's ones are on. Grab that med kit. JP is taking down So Lucky. So Lucky's now at half HP. He's looking to get shots down on Stave, but he can't quite hit them. So Lucky's pushing him right. He puts a little bit of damage on. So Lucky's almost dead. Stave challenges him and takes out JP. -uh. And Stay Lucky's just going to barely take that point for loop two at least. This could give them their first round win in this game uh, if they can maintain that. But this but... is OT. Yeah, the, I, I don't, it's, it's very complicated when it comes to this like high level gameplay and strategy, um, especially when it's overtime and there's no med kits, it changes up a lot of things and it's kind of hard to think what they're predicting to do. And it looks like JP, oh, it's going to another overtime here. So the interesting thing with OT is being on point at OT is usually a disadvantage, but with this, with how big this map is and you don't have line of sight from spawn onto point, you're typically able to escape with your threes if you're caught up there. It gives you just a little bit enough time to uh, run away, assuming you don't get pre-fired by any other uh, clones that are starting in the middle as well. Yeah, you're really not too concerned about the new spawn clones. It's the ones that are still alive as well who could pre-fire you. And we do have Stapes 2 up, which could very well do that. Stapes does get desync. There are no health packs up for him to resync. So he's just going to possibly do some free fires and run erratically and jump on point while desynced. A solid Team JD are on. They take out Stapes 1 to secure loop 2. It looks like Soloki's 3 is quickly taken out by JP's 3, so that leaves only Stave against both of these competitors. But JP gets taken out by Stave's 1 before Stave gets taken out by Dart's 3. JD are going to sweep this match. That's going to put them up in a 2-0 lead in matchups. Only one win away from winning this entire 2v2 tournament. And now, that said, um, Stafe and Solucky are really bringing out some um, good pressure on Team JD, but they can't just quite get the points on Loop 3. Yeah, the the round wins are misleading sometimes, and in this case, they definitely are, since it, it is a lot more balanced uh, gameplay than the round wins might make you believe. Team Stay Lucky just needs to do a little something to, to just secure that third loop. I think that's where they're really losing out. Um, that last uh, round was a lot of OT, and that tends to get a little bit more chaotic. So we'll see how they bring it this time. Um, it looks like they are ready to go. We are in match.
the overlay should be correct. Stafe is pre-firing mid. He does take out Darth. But Darth resyncs. He is low now. And Very Stafe low. gets taken out. When he is crashing point, that leaves only so lucky on. There's a lot of damage that went out this first loop. So lucky himself on point is at around 10 HP or so. It's, I think, was it Darth there that had the super low health right at the end and then got killed? Um, could, be, could be easily saved whoever uh, player that was. Uh, I think since so. Since the enemy also had super low health, he just missed a couple of those headshots as they were dueling. Right between the eyes. There you go. Team JD has point control this loop too. Yeah, loop one, we saw a lot of damage and every single clone was really low whenever they were jumping on point there. So I wouldn't be surprised if we don't see those those loop one clones for the rest of this round. Yeah, they did a lot of damage early on in those first loops. Not going to be relied on. And Stafe is looking for some damage. He grabs a health pack. He was going after Darth and JP. We didn't see uh, Stafe land a lot of his shots there. Um, he was trying to target these threes, but he didn't quite get very many hits. JD does take that round. Yeah, and just watching Dart's perspective during that one, he was uh, being a little more conservative, trying to pick off people while I was following him. He was staying back, taking a lot of pot shots, just weakening all the uh, enemy clones. So that way it'd make it an easier final push at the end. JP's trying to stay safe, going after Stafe here, or that's so lucky actually. Um, he does take down Stafe. He's trying to kill so lucky, but he runs out of ammo. He switches the pistol, gets a kill off. Or I believe Darth does, actually. They both do some teamwork there to take out that one. Both ones. They finish that loop uh, with pretty high health for what we've seen for these games. Or maybe a little bit more than half on each of them, which is still better than the past few rounds when they end with like two or three health. JP does good to take down so lucky's two. So lucky's very low. He is hiding. JP gets the kill on So Lucky. He's targeting Stafe's too. He gets the kill. JD is going to have point control here with four other clones. So Lucky was in an awkward position. He had so little health. I guess his his plan was maybe to just rush to the point, maybe survive without getting killed. But before he could even fully reach his way all the way to the top of the platform, he got taken out. We saw JP put out a lot of damage here, and he actually JP takes out uh, So Lucky's three with a barrel, but So Lucky resyncs by beating JP's two. So these players are now going off against each other. So lucky pushes, but gets taken out by Darth. JP takes out Stafe's three, and that one dies just at the very last second. Team JD take this round. And we are one round away from Darth and JP winning the entire tournament, it looks like. They really dominated that second matchup, um, and it looks like they're doing the same for this last loop. I think Team JD has just kind of gotten a read on uh, Stay Lucky. And yeah. Stay Lucky needs to change something up or answer it. I thought we might at least get an overtime in that last round there because they both had Close. an equal amount of players running towards it, but they were able to take them all out and maintain an easy control. JD and So Lucky joust, and JP takes out So Lucky without getting hit once. And he also takes out Stafe with a little help from Darth. I think the thing that's uh, really, no pun intended, killing Stay Lucky here is just the aim of these two competitors, JD and of Team JD. JP does not win the um, relay on the health pack. He is taken out here. Everyone is crashing point, and Stay Lucky does take out um, darts too. 
It is interesting we're only seeing SMG, uh, no rifles, laser, shotgun have made it into the fray yet. They're just sticking with the, the SMG only. The most accurate game, accurate gun basically for most of these players since that's what they use the most. And before the uh, grenade launcher meta, the SMG was the meta. So is this really the second choice here? Players are crashing point, and it looks like we're gonna go into an OT here because Darth yeah. 3 is alive. He just so, cannot kill whoops. Stace 1. Could have seen an end right there. Stace and 1's pre-firing. Med kits. It's gonna just come down to uh, who can aim better. So look, he is staying safe with his one. He's facing off against JP, who's trying to get some hits on him. Um, he's targeting Darth, but so lucky it's taken out by JP, who he wasn't looking at. Both members of JD are on point for this OT loop one. JP's putting some pre fires out, targeting Stafe and switching between him and So Lucky. So he's having a hard time keeping track of who to look at. Stafe is low HP on home ramp. He does get taken out when he pushes points. So Lucky's still alive, but he gets taken out from behind by JP. Yeah, he was focusing a little too far forward on the, some previous clones, and it let him get taken out pretty easily by Darth or JP on the point there. You see, JP's three is on point as well as Darth. Darth was getting pre-fired here, and he does get taken out um, by Stace three actually. JP versus Stace goes in Stace's favor. I think both of JD's threes are down, which means this is probably going to go into favor of Stay Lucky if they can just get the kills. And there's a one crashing point here. He's gonna get on because they can't oh, kill him. <laughs> JP's one secures an OT. There. Which now I believe gives an advantage to Darth and JP because they're going to get brand new third clones, and I think it does. They lucky had their their third clones are still out there. Almost all of their clones here are on uh, point, as you can see. They're, well, there are three of them. Right the Stave gets taken out. So lucky gets taken out. Both of these competitors are going to get on point. Oh, I don't think JP made it on. Close. I can't tell. But it does show just how much chaos can happen in a 2v2 that they definitely forgot about this uh one darth or jp player rushing at the last second they should have been watching him but they probably thought they took everybody out and were just waiting for the victory and i was actually looking at a free cam view there so i wasn't actually able to see where Stephen and Saluki were looking so i'm unsure if they just didn't see him or if all the bodies were just blocking those shots because that sometimes happens too I've been in a match before where my own clone has blocked my shots to push into an OC, and that could have very well happened here. I know. It looks like there is a uh, either So Lucky or J or sorry, So Lucky or Stafe is getting a brand new third clone. And we're seeing So Lucky push behind here against Darth. Darth does take out So Lucky to avoid the flank, and Stafe's three is low. He's very low, and he's Stafe taken, out. taken out. Yeah, by Darth. And it looks like Darth is going to take this last point. They're going to sweep for this final match, and it's going to go. The finals are going to go in their favor. Here we go. We have a winner of the finals and a 3 0 uh, lead you know, in these uh, best of five games. Darth and JP won the 2v2 tournament. So lucky and safe made it in second place. They both come in, going to go away with uh, some Steam gift cards, but Darth and JP are victorious as the number one winners. And even though it was sweeps, um, I mean, like we've said many times before, the round score doesn't always show how close it was. And stay mm -hmm. lucky, they were really close to taking a number of those rounds. I mean, even that just that last one we saw, yeah, I got pushed in OT. I mean, JP's won just barely sneaks on point, boost jumps in, pushes it to OT, and that let, lets them win that round. Like, talk about a clutch play. Yeah, that was uh, definitely a surprise. <clears throat> I, I thought even at the end of that last game there, there was um, either So Lucky or Stafe. It looked like his clone may have done the same thing, jump forward at the last second, but they were able to take him out before yeah. he could make it to the point.
that was a really fun match to watch, to be honest. Um, yeah. I will say the grenade launchers, although they are meta, it is not as fun to watch those games. So this was a really good finals matchup. Went into JD's favor, and we have um, a Quantum League Steam key to give away. So yeah, One more. Calling everyone in chat to um, join this giveaway. Last time we had one person. So I will open that up. We need you guys we have to some join. Good chances here. So we can give this away. It's going to be the same thing. Quantum League. Make sure I spell it correctly. That will be the worst, right? And make sure that uh, you are following the channel and leaving the notifications on. So that way, when the next tournaments happen, you'll get a notification right when they start. You can jump in and uh, watch along with us. So this giveaway is now open. Go and type Quantum League one word in chat, all lowercase, to join the giveaway. This is for a Steam key for Quantum League. If you have Quantum League already, you can still join and give it to a friend who doesn't. Looks like we got a lot of contestants here. Looking a lot more guy. this time. <clears throat> this will be an interesting draw. Give it a minute or two. Let people get in if they're lurking. I've been through, I don't know, you put a, a slash at the end. I don't know if that'll count in terms of entering. You might have to type that again without the slash. Yes, I believe so. Otherwise, you may not officially be entered. There is no penalty for typing it multiple times. So, I mean, please don't spam, but if you type it multiple times, you will still be in it. Yeah, you, you don't get multiple. Uh, yeah, you don't you're get... not in there like five times if you just type it five times. Yeah, that, that doesn't work either. <laughs> a lot more players or a lot more uh, enters to this giveaway. It looks like 11 so far. A lot of people jumping in on this. I'll give it about 30 more seconds before drawing. Last call to anybody. Okay. I think that's going to be all the people who join. So I will draw this. Drum roll. J Dragon just won a free Quantum League key. We actually saw him in the tournament, so looks like one of his friends are probably going to join the fray. Congratulations. Um, and I will be sending you a whisper in Twitch. All right, and I think we do have another tournament planned for next week. I was seeing that posted around here. A 1v1 tournament, I believe. Uh, double check on that. Um, I'm not seeing Jay in the Twitch chat, so I'll send it to him via Discord. Um, but either way, if, if with a, even without the exact details, there's always tournaments going on. We've been doing one once a week. Uh, let's see. It looks like the 23rd is going to be a 1v1 tournament. Uh, so make sure to sign up for that. Don't need another teammate, obviously, because it is 1v1. So if you felt like you didn't have someone to play with, now's your chance to show off your skill on your own. And uh, we'll do another tournament, possibly cast you. So make sure you're working on your A game so you don't embarrass yourself in front of everybody watching. And that's going to end it for this stream. So thank you guys for watching. And we will catch you later. Goodbye, everybody.